What happens with people who got COVID a while ago and who are still suffering from it? A new study from Stanford University has some findings on this. Turns out that COVID patients, some of them, can harbor COVID in their intestinal system, basically, for months after getting infected. Researchers say this makes them more worried that the virus could aggravate the immune system and cause some of these long-term symptoms. Our team talked with one woman who's had a two-year-long battle, two years long, for long COVID. Shamir Smith got the virus at the very start of the pandemic, and since then, she says her life has not been the same, and she's not alone. Researchers think as many as 23 million Americans are dealing with long COVID. Our Dr. John Torres explains what it's like for some of these patients. Shamir Smith loved teaching middle school English in Baltimore, going over Shakespeare, helping students write great essays. When the pandemic started, she told her students it would all be okay, but it wasn't. I knew that something eerie, eerie was happening in my body. It was March 2020, and Smith was experiencing COVID symptoms. I experienced a full range of symptoms that first week um, that grew into some of the most bizarre, frightening, and also uh, frustrating symptoms um, I've ever experienced in my entire life. And I didn't consult Smith myself, but she told me that by April of 2020, her COVID test came back negative. However, she realized her COVID symptoms were lingering longer than expected. I fainted in my bathroom. I lost my vision at the end of, uh, of April. My body just never recovered. I mean, my cough was per persistent. My lungs were burning. I couldn't smell or taste. I never tested positive for COVID, but I was one of the patients who finally, after a year, was clinically diagnosed. Smith has what experts are calling long COVID. The World Health Organization defines it as the constellation of long-term symptoms that some people experience after they have had COVID-19. Symptoms said to last for at least two months, including fatigue, shortness of breath, persistent cough, and aches. One of the researchers that works with us, she said it well. She said COVID didn't kill them, but it, it killed their life in some ways. Epidemiologist Shruti Mehta is leading a study at Johns Hopkins University that wants to recruit 25,000 participants. The goal, understanding long COVID better. One thing that, that we've learned is that no one is immune. Medical research around long COVID is in the early days, and experts are only beginning to understand how many people are affected and for how long. I kept saying, hey, you know, I'll be back in August of 2020. Then it became, I'll be back in January of 2021. But when I realized in August of 2020 that I was not going to be able to go back to work, I think I sat in my room for about two days and I cried. Her symptoms are life-changing. I get migraines 16 to 20 times a month. Fatigue is still a big issue for me. It's hard for me to walk because every now and again, I'll get this intense joint pain. The Biden administration announced a plan to prevent, detect, and treat long COVID. It includes accelerating research, expanding long COVID clinics, and supporting workers with long COVID. And Senator Tammy Duckworth and Representative Ayanna Presley introduced a bill to fund more and expanded long COVID clinics. But for many suffering from long COVID, they're finding support with each other, some joining long COVID support and advocacy groups, others participating in studies like Meta's at Johns Hopkins. Their feedback critical to moving the research forward. We feel what they're feeling. The more participants that we can get, the faster that we can run, the faster we can learn. Learning from patients who, like Smith, still await answers as they continue to live with long COVID. I miss what I do. I miss what I did. And sometimes I have a hard time placing tents because sometimes it's hard to, to remember that I don't do it anymore. Aww. Dr. John Torres is joining us now. And, like, that's such an important story, Dr. John, because I think there's this moment where a lot of people feel like we are moving past the pandemic here, but there are still millions of Americans who are dealing with some of these symptoms and a lot that researchers don't know about it. What I found interesting about that story and in, in reading more about this is that there is some hope that this could actually accelerate different kinds of br potential breakthroughs when it comes to illnesses, right? 
And Hal, you're correct. And unfortunately, for better or for worse, this has been a very huge experiment across the world with millions of people, almost half a billion people getting COVID. And so that gives them a huge database of what to look at and see what's happening here. And one of the things we are learning is, yes, this viral illness, even though it might go away, it can leave behind some symptoms and some other issues that we don't know how long those are going to last. And we don't think that's unique to COVID. It could be happening to other things as well. But what's happening now is we're finding out that researchers are coming together, they're sharing data, they're sharing information information, and that is certainly accelerating that research as time goes on, and we think that's going to expand to other fields of medicine as well. And so I hate to say there's any silver lining to all that's happened over the last couple of years, but this is one of the things that might certainly come out from it, Hallie. You referenced that $1.5 billion study, right, this, this long COVID research plan that the White House wants to fast track. What is the timeline for when we might start to get some answers here, Dr. John? You know the medical field. You know how long some of this stuff takes. What's realistic? So the timeline right now is something we don't really know because what they did in this, uh, uh, basically assessment, what they want to do is they want to go ahead and have HHS, the Health and Human Services, to start a plan to get everything coordinated because up until now, it's been a bit hodgepodge around the country of different clinics and different researchers. Pulling that together, that obviously takes money. They put some money into this, but some critics are saying it's not quite enough and for long enough. But we know this is going to go on for a while, and we know this is something that's going to happen possibly for years or decades from now. So getting it now and understanding it now is important for these people going forward and moving forward, Hallie. Dr. John Torres, great to see you. Thank you for bringing us tonight's original. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.